I'm Kenneth A. Jacobson, PhD. I'm chief of the Laboratory of Bioorganic Chemistry at the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive and Kidney Diseases, known as NIDDK. This is one of the 27 institutes and centers of the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. GPCRs, as they're known, uh, are one of the mainstays of drug discovery, both in academia and in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, roughly a third of the drugs on the market work through GPCRs, uh, and they remain uh, an important target area. So in the past few years, the number of three-dimensional structures of GPCRs has greatly expanded, and this gives us new opportunities for rational drug design. When I first got into the field, uh, the approach was purely empirical. We now can work with much greater targeting uh, of a particular site on a GPCR. We have means for in silico screening to discover uh, new chemotypes for a particular GPCR. There are also different modes of interaction with GPCRs, such as both orthosteric and allosteric ligands, uh, or uh, compounds that are biased in their activation of the GPCR. So this can serve to reduce side effects in the body. So we're involved in the area of purinergic receptors which uh, concerns the four subtypes of adenosine receptors uh, and the eight subtypes of P2Y receptors that respond to extracellular nucleotides. It comes as a, as a surprise to some scientists that ATP and other nucleotides have an important signaling role outside the cell. And these signals are functional in every organ in the body there is some uh, mixture of these various subtypes in every tissue and uh, it's, it, at the same time it gives us uh, great opportunities for intervening therapeutically in many different disease conditions but it's also a, a, a challenge because there are so many sites of the receptors in the body it's harder to achieve selectivity but we think we're on the right track now. Well, we're fortunate that two of our early prototypical ligands are now in advanced clinical trials. These are both agonists of the A3 adenosine receptor, and they're in, in phase three trials for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and phase two trials for liver diseases, including primary liver cancer and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis a consequence of fatty liver conditions. We're also working on similar A3 agonists of high, very high selectivity that we designed through structural-based approaches as potential treatment for chronic neuropathic pain. The purinergic field seems to constantly get renewed and there are new target areas. So one area that's just come to light in the past few years is using A2A adenosine antagonists as a co-therapy in the immunotherapy of cancer. Uh, not only can we block the receptor to boost the immune response, uh, but we can also modulate the level of extracellular adenosine by uh, preventing, uh, preventing its breakdown to raise the level or preventing its formation to lower the level. So there are a lot of indirect approaches as well. Uh, I'm always energized when I come to the ACS meeting. I've been very active in the medicinal chemistry division, uh, so I spend most of my time in those sessions, but I'm also interested in biological chemistry, computational chemistry, and the ACS meeting, although it's a relatively large meeting, it's, it's not overwhelming because of the way it's organized in different divisions that have a, an important focus. And it's great for networking. Uh, I've developed uh, many long-term friendships with other P 
people in my field through this meeting and even developed new collaborations from people I meet here.